Hello there, my friends. Let's look at my favorite things I made over the past year. If you've watched my channel before, you know that I mostly make things out of cardboard. In this past year in particular, I focused a lot on terrain, ruined buildings, little pieces of scatter terrain, for one of my favorite games, Mordheim. In my unhinged welcome back video, I mentioned that building my Mordheim table and all these crafts and stuff sort of became like a form of art therapy for me. Through focusing on that and really looking at working on details and skills and textures, I think I grew to another level, like a level higher than where I'd been. I especially love how the wood textures have turned out on this building in particular as I focused on in my wood texture cardstock video. So those are ruins. Another essential part of making a Mordheim board is having risers and platforms to give you a change in elevation. You can see how this one, I made it especially ruined by carving out little craters and impact marks. While most YouTubers use foam, I like cardboard. This one was sort of a, a tray box that was held a case of Red Bull. I basically just turned the box upside down, built in some stairs and then textured it. Easy peasy. City riser platforms like this are important for games that take place in ruins because you can't have traditional hills really. The first two ruins I have completely finished. They're built, they're detailed, and they're painted. I have many more ruins that are finished with the detail step but on the paint table. I haven't painted them quite yet. This one is one of my very favorites. From the work I did on the cracked tiles to the floorboards to the wall texture, you can see it has like a face in it to the little magical symbol. There's something definitely special about this ruin. This one is part of me recreating the terrain from the original Mordheim box game, but in cardboard and at a slightly bigger scale because, well, my hands are kind of big. These are two more also from the original box game that I recreated with my own cardboard and texture techniques. This was around the time last year where I really started trying to improve, especially with the floorboards and ground textures just to really level up the things I make. And I love these two so much that I built another two to go with them. So it's like a full set that you can arrange them into a square or any combination of other corner ruins. You can see how they go together here with the same overhang, the same directions of the floorboards on both floors. I really like how this set turned out. Here's another one that's built but not detailed or painted yet, also based on the original Mordheim terrain. And then I built a couple similar to it, but slightly, I guess, of my own design. Not particularly inspired, but they'd be very fun to play on. Providing height, cover, and more fun places to explore. This one is one of the first buildings I made using a cardboard stone block technique I was working on. You can see they're all different sizes, but I think it turned out really well. It should look great once it's detailed and painted. Here's another one I made of my own design, and it is all detailed, but still on the paint table. I wanted it to be more minimalistic of a ruin, so it still provides cover, a little bit of height and elevation, but more just an interesting shape. And I left space there to put something like crates, barrels, something else to add more interest. Speaking of crates, I came up with a way to make what I feel like are much bigger and better crates than in my original video. And I posted a video already showing how to make them. They're fantastic for adding life to your games, making them look lived in, but also they can be very useful. Your soldiers can of course take cover behind them, but you can also use them as improvised staircases so your soldiers can move around easier. I'm really proud of how my cardboard cart turned out. I've also posted a video already showing how to make it, but this one, yeah, this is definitely a culmination of all the work I did growing my skills. And the same with my barricades. I'm really proud of how they turned out. I absolutely love them. So this piece is inspired from the original Mordheim terrain again. The original piece has grotesque faces carved into it, but I decided to make it into sort of a celestial monument. And it's when I started using these skull beads as a recurring theme. This is a statue, someone's once beloved horse. 
The horse was a cheap thrift store toy. The base of the statue is a potato salad container. The rest is cardboard. Here's another piece that features the skull beads, but also has toothpicks for spikes. I wanted to see if I could make a crypt or mausoleum just out of cardboard and make it look really cool. I feel like it worked out. A little while ago, I showed how to make my spooky cardboard trees, and this is part two, city trees. Mushrooms, a stone foundation, and our skull beads again. This would be perfect in any graveyard or creepy city park. So not only do I love this piece for how it turned out, but the cardboard mine, cave, and dungeon entrance was the first video I posted again after my year-long disappearance. And the techniques I learned making this are used in a lot of future projects that I think you guys are really going to love. This is the second piece I made when I was developing my stone block technique using just little cardboard bricks. They're still all different sizes, but I think they turned out pretty well. Painting would be a lot better now if I was to make it again, but I, was, I like how it feels. It definitely has like a ruined stone sort of Skyrim kind of tower feel to it, and I like that a lot. This is me just recreating another piece from inspiration I saw, I think probably in a Facebook group, where somebody had made a little house like this out of foam, and I thought, that seems unnecessary. So as I've said before, I'm also very into Frostgrave as well as Mordheim. And Frostgrave is all about magic, wizards, and all the powerful crazy stuff they can do. So I wanted to make a big sort of magic circle platform. I just sort of drew these all out on cardboard, the steps, the big spikes, and yeah, they worked out well. I love how the skull beads went, and I just need to detail it at some point. While I love cardboard, I wanted to try crafting some things with wood too. So I made some ladders, walkways, bridges, using barbecue skewers, popsicle sticks, and toothpicks. There's not much to say about them right now other than that they look pretty good and they work well. They seem fairly strong. I haven't tried making any ladders, bridges, walkways out of cardboard with my new techniques yet, but making these gave me an idea for another series of wood versus cardboard and different things and which is better in different situations. Because they all have their own strengths and weaknesses. All materials do. I just use cardboard for most things because it works for me for most things. These, however, I liked using wood. So I made a couple other neat things. I learned how to hand sew a dice bag and I plan on making a tutorial for that, something like sewing with cell rock. It'll be very chaotic. I also made these little shelf mushroom shelves that you could attach with poster tack, the blue tack, to another shelf and use them to display miniatures. They're just made out of cardboard and texture paper and very easy, but they look pretty cool, I thought, especially if you put more than one. Do you have a favorite from any of the things I've made? Anything you'd really like to see a tutorial video on? Leave a comment. Thank you for watching, my friends. Take care until next time.